Hello, good morning. So we've got a really, really nice case again today. Um, this is uh, a case using a very special file, or we should we say a very unusual looking file. This is the XP Endo series of files, and specifically we're using the finisher file. And it's an unusual file because you have to kind of activate it with um, temperature. So you have to make it very, very cold to um, make sure it um, sort of uh, occupies a certain shape and then when it hits warmth it then creates another shape and we'll we'll get into that uh, in in further on down the the, uh, the 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 video today so if we look at the case this is an upper uh, four it's a retreat case and um yeah the, the 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 gp that's in there at the moment is less than ideal it's um it's short of the working length and luckily here we can see that the uh the the the, the, the we can see canal space apical to the uh the, the remaining gp there so that's that's a really good sign because when you're doing retreats you want to ideally see space apical to the gp because then you know there's a pot you know there's a strong possibility that you can get to the end also with this case i got a uh, a, a cbct and you can see here that actually the cbct indicates that there are two canals in this case and it's not obvious on the uh, the 2d imaging the periapical radiograph that there, there was two um, in this case, I wanted to take a CBCT because I was concerned about the internal anatomy. And this gives us lots and lots of information, okay? So this gives us information on where to expect where the join is. So um, obviously on the CBCT here, I can't see apical to the GP. So I don't know um, if the two canals join uh, together kind of equally or one's uh, a main canal and one's kind of a sort of a lateral canal um, but it but it but it gives me kind of a um, uh, an idea of where the two canals join and I can um, uh, you know just take a rough measurement there so when I'm shaping the tooth I know um, you know where possibly where that join is the initial access so that the 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 composite filling in this case is 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 sound um, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to access the tooth right through the middle and you know, at this moment, I'd noticed I was slightly going off axis. This is really, really easy to do with a premolar. So um, the the sort of the occlusal sort of plane of the tooth, uh, sorry, of the of the patient wasn't in the same plane as the sort of the long axis of the tooth. So what I wanted to do is just um, reangulate my uh, my burr there, and I finally managed to. Um, unroof the the pulp chamber or the or the, the the composite filling and i can see gp now at this point i am using an ultrasonic just to break apart the gp and any kind of like loose restoration and i think i can see two distinct gp points but we'll find out later on that that it isn't um it distinct so what i'm going to use now is a dg16 endodontic probe and i'm just slowly kind of picking away at this gp and I, what I want to do is I kind of, kind of want to lift it away from the wall. Okay, usually when you're trying to remove GP, um, if it's if it's kind of like condensed against the wall, it's difficult to remove. So, like I said before, the CBCT indicates that the uh, the join is around 18 millimeters. So I'm going to use a size 25 high flex variable tapered file uh, to try and remove the GP 17 millimeters away. So. I don't often like to use rotary files straight away to remove GP because um, on occasion, say the GP is all the way to length, the, the, the rotary files can actually push the GP past the, the, the working length. But um, the, 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 the problem with using uh, H files to remove GP is it just takes forever. You know, if you can just whiz um, a rotary file down there, that can usually pull out most of the GP. And I know in this case, extrusion of, of, of remaining GP isn't a massive issue because it's short of the working length. So I have um, mushed up a lot of the GP. That's a problem with rotary files removing GPs. You can kind of create this kind of um, all this mush and you can break apart the GP and it can be difficult to remove in one. That is another 
um, sort of uh, pro with high, um, a head strum file is, and you'll see later that you can remove fully pieces of GP and that, that can be um, time um, consuming to remove tiny little fragments as you can see here you know I've, 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 I've removed a lot of the GP but it's 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 made tiny little fragments that are difficult to remove so one thing I like to do with um, uh, tiny little fragments of GP is to uh, dislodge them with ultrasonic activation. So this is my 18th Ultra X ultrasonic device. So this is used to activate irrigants, but also if you um, irrigate the tooth and then you uh, use this ultrasonic activator in the tooth, the GP tends to dislodge quite significantly. So this is a this is um. I suppose killing two birds with one stone here because we are disinfecting the tooth, but also we're, we're dislodging GP. And um, as I um, as I flush out this canal here, I I think hmm, maybe maybe this is um, not both canals. I can I um, I, I initially thought I'd um, expose both orifices, but once I've obviously um, removed all the GP from the buckle canal I can see a tiny tiny little bit of GP in the palate and I've just used an ultrasonic there just to remove some of the the dentin and um, you can see here there's much more GP so there is obviously another canal space but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just try and get the working length of this um, this, uh, this 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 canal what I what I must say is I don't need to get too het up about um, lengths and things because obviously our um, sort of uh, markers or where we place the bung is really arbitrary okay so you'll see in a minute that the palatal canal is actually a longer um, is actually a longer working length but it but it joins onto the buckle and uh, that's because the palatal uh, cusp is much higher than the buckle so I'm just further refining the access here just so I can get into the uh, the, the palatal canal the problem with removing GP is if you haven't got um, a, an open access the, the GP can kind of like ledge underneath, um, you know, uh, dentin or, you know, a, um, a, a pulp chamber roof if it hasn't been removed and also um, a filling. So, um, again, just using this DG probe just to um, just to dislodge it from the, the walls and again, straight back in with a high flex. Lots of irrigation. And at this point, I'm thinking to myself, um, you know, I can't quite remove all of the GP and I'm going to try this um, headstrom file technique where I just screw the, uh, the headstrom file into the GP and then I just warn the patient that I'm going to push quite firmly or pull quite firmly on, on the tooth and then as you can see here as I pull this headstrom file out I've managed to remove all of the GP in one and that's a, that's a super nice feeling because um, you know that that's that's removed all of the fragments or all the big fragments that can be difficult, and um, you know it just saves time, doesn't it? So, again, I am concerned about fragments, so I'm just going to um, irrigate the canal. This is the platel now, and I'm going to activate it, and I can see that there are uh, tiny, tiny little fragments remaining, and um, I'm just going to uh, just use a size 10 K file just to sort of uh, recapitulate in the the, the, the the buckle canal. I just want to make sure that I am still painting. Sometimes when you um, remove GP from one canal, say it's, I'm going to call the buckle the main canal, and then you remove GP from the uh, palatal canal. I say the palatal canal is the accessory canal in this case. It can block things. You just want to make sure you recapitulate there. So at this point, I want to check confluence. I want to check the that if the how where, how and where these two canals join so we know the working length of the the buccal canal is 23 and um we're just going to fit a gp point to length and then we're going to place a, a a k file in the um in the in the in the palatal canal and then we're going to use uh, the rubber stopper just to, uh, to 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 mark where the join is we're going to remove the file and then we're going to inspect the gp point and as you can see here it's made a mark so again ad nauseum i talk about this all the time the great thing about knowing where a join is um is you can uh, you can you can set your all your files up to this length and know that you are successfully cleaning the whole length of the canal, and again, we've still got a little bit of GP and sealer left, 
So um, we know there's a little bit of um, GP remaining, so we're going to use this high flex file just at, at, at the at the point to where the two canals join and we're going to see if the sort of taper on this is going to remove some of the GP and in this case it doesn't actually remove all of it. So we're going to use a DG16 probe just to remove the excess against the wall and you can see there's a little bit of fragments here. You know, you've got to actually be careful you don't dislodge some of these fragments too much without any irrigant in and because they've got a tendency to drop down into the canal and, and re-blocking it. So this is the magic file. We're going to use the endo finisher here because I can't quite scrape all of the walls. And you can see here, while it's warm, this file has got a kind of a half moon or crescent shape. And um, you can, because it's difficult of the shape, you can actually use this kind of plastic sleeve here just to set the length. Because if you put that into a normal um, endo ruler, you know, it'd be difficult to, 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 to measure the, the length of the file. So what we use here is we use endo frost to cool the file within the sleeve. And as you can see, as we remove it from the sleeve, it has got a straight um, sort of uh, shape. But when I put the file on the warmth of my hand, it then moves into that crescent moon shape. And we're going to use it at quite a high RPM as well, we're using it at 800 RPM. And the reason why we, uh, we, we, we cool down the file and we, we make it um, uh, straighter so we can get it into the, uh, the canal because it's almost impossible um, to get a bended file into the canal. And as you can see here, it took me multiple, multiple times to manage to get it inside the canal. It's very, very frustrating. But eventually I managed to slip um, the, the, the file into this palatal canal. And again, what's the significance of the shape of this file? It essentially, it scrapes the walls, okay, because of the, the sort of crescent moon shape, it's going to try and remove a lot of the kind of um, remaining GP within the walls here. And we can see that uh, most of it's been removed, there's just one tiny little piece uh, remaining. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and irrigate it out here, but I, but I can't quite get the, with the irrigants. And then I'm going to again use my ultrasonic activator just to just to activate some of the GP that's still remaining. And you know, this Ultra X is, is as you can see, I've used it for three things here. It's a really, really good uh, piece of equipment. It's very, very versatile. And then we're just gonna use our final irrigation protocol. We're using um, sodium hypochlorite all the way through the appointment and we're using EDTA. And um, you know, we're just gonna uh, prep now the, the tooth for uh, the cone fit. And we're gonna use uh, the cone 0.5 millimeters from the working length and we're gonna fit that that cone to length and then we're just gonna have a little tug back and two just to feel for tug back and it's just a nice kind of uh, feeling there and then we're gonna prep the cone for the the palatal canal and again um, don't forget the joins um, at 20 from the palatal cusp and you can see here with the comfort radiograph that it's a beautiful, beautiful radiograph. We've got nice um, shaped GP here and it's to length and I'm, I'm really excited to see what this is going to look like. So we're just going to remove uh, the GP points here now and I'm and usually when uh, I pull out a GP from uh, uh, one that's 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 joined onto another canal, you can get that kind of concertina look. Um, in this case, it hasn't. And then we're going to just, again, use uh, lots of sodium hypochlorite and again, a bit more EDTA just to open up those, um, those uh, to remove the smear layer and also open up all those lateral canals. And then we're going to just dry these canals really, really nicely with these, um, these paper points. And I'm using um, some Wave 1 Gold paper points and these are in the packs. Ask me if they're sterile. I don't know if they are, but it's better than using the ones in the little plastic container. And then again, we're going to use obturation. We're going to use a, uh, a one fill. And you can see here when I fill this bioceramic in one of the canals, it fills the other canal. So that's kind of another proof that it that it that it does join if you need any more proof. And then I know that there's a kind of like a bit of a curve in this uh, buckle canal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a very, very um, uh, uh, long bend in the canal. And I'm going to sort of push the GP point to length very, very slowly. 
you know, there's nothing more disheartening than doing all of this hard work. And you come to Obtray, you take the post off, and your GP points got stagged and it hasn't reached the end. That's really, really annoying. So I um, just want to slowly, slowly push down the GP and I want to avoid this, uh, this vapor lock. Um, as I push it down and then again just shear off the excess GP really really carefully and I suppose the um, the 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 word here is shear off because if you push down with a heated plugger and you pull out then you, you know, there's a risk of pulling out the GP again annoying thing when you've spent two hours on a tooth and you can look at the, um, the radiograph here and it looks absolutely fantastic you know we've got um, We've got a, a very, very radio opaque uh, filling material. It goes all the way to length. It just, it doesn't get better than this. You know, um, this 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 particular patient we did this uh, this root canal on um, was probably one of my favorite patients of a very, very long time. Um, he was super intelligent. Um, he was um, super engaged. I believe he's an engineer, so um, I, I always think dentistry's um, sort of mouth engineering. And he understood he understood um, canal morphology, and um, he he was he was um, he was. I, I managed to sit him up, and we talked about this X-ray for a bit, and and it was and he was super engaging. And sometimes I wish all patients were like that. And overall, this is just a fantastic case. You know, it has everything. It's got a, a super engaged patient. It's got um, GP removal. It's got um, you know, I suppose in a small way, it's 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 finding an accessory canal when you think you've found one canal it's got removing gp it's using this xp um endo file which which i don't often use um but it, it it's it's used to um in in certain cases where there is um kind of a gp on the walls of of the canal and you can't quite scrape all the little bits off especially when they're kind of out of sight and overall you know this is um the types of cases you come to work for it's just absolutely fantastic and there it is another friday another case um again as as always um if you have any comments if you have any criticisms if you think you could have done something a little bit differently or better um if anything that i've said you think um isn't correct Put it in the comments section below. We like debate, we like to talk, and we like to learn. Um, I also have a membership program, a new thing from uh, YouTube. Um, if you become a member for a very, very small fee, you can get um, access ac access to um, exclusive content for a very, very small fee. And, and of course, you'll be um, supporting the channel. And um, overall, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.